Good morning, everybody. All right. So, um, this is um, probably, well, today, today might wind up being my last day hiking with this jacket. I wanted to give you a little review. Um, it's uh, Arcteryx, and it's, um, I don't think it even has the name on here, but I know what it is. It's an Atom SL, um, size medium. When I bought this, I... I really like the old Arcteryx gear, and this is no exception. I mean, this is a fantastic piece of equipment here. Um, it's got the side pockets. Okay, first off, I'll say, why do I have this? Well, because um, this is like a quasi, it's a wind layer. It's a wind breaker. It's got the ripstop fabric. And... Um, but it's got a little tiny little bit of insulation um, in it. It's not like you can't even compress it. It's like flat. It's really, really, really thin. On the sides um, of the jacket, it's got um, like, well, on the Atom LT and S, no, just the LT, this side panel here is a, is a, thick fleece. Here, it's like a, it's not even really fleece. It's fuzzy, but it's not a fleece. It's really, really, really lightweight. In fact, this thing is less than a pound. Now, it's got absolutely no insulation in the sleeves, but it does have, um, it has a lining that is mesh. Now, <clears throat> a few things that I want to say about this jacket is it's four years old at least when I first got it I intended for this to be a street jacket because I really like the color yellow I like I like how yellow looks on me and um, so I went out on a hike and you see that spot there and um, I think this one here too and that one now these ones are really greatly diminished. Oh, there's another one down here and another. Oh, that's the same one. So yeah, there was some spots that actually, I don't know if you know this, but, uh, oh, here we go. Over here too on this sleeve. Now these never washed out. Never. It's poison oak. It's the juice of poison oak plant. It will stain. If you, if it dries, it, it's like the fresh stuff. It's like, um, the, the sap just comes pouring out when you cut, see we cut branches, we cut really thick bush poison oak, like really thick, even thicker than that. I cut one that was bigger, I couldn't hold it in my hand. And um, uh, the, the juice just comes right out. So anyway, we're going through bushes and we just happened to snap a few poison oak branches and that put the juice on my jacket and it never went away completely. I washed and washed and washed. So it ruined this as a street jacket. So I just started wearing it full time on hikes. So um, I'm a pretty abuse, abusive person to my clothing. Um, not on purpose, but it's just due to the nature of being a bushwhacker and a trail builder. And so <laughs> my jacket, like one time I got caught on a bush and it just went... Now this happened after four years. This was this year. And so I I stitched it back together again, kind of Franken-stitched it. But, you know, it works. It's functional. I don't really give a rip how what anybody thinks about what I look like when I'm out there. To be honest with you, if I run into anybody on the trail, I'm not worried about, oh, they're, I'm wearing a jacket that doesn't makes me look like I'm homeless or something. I don't really care. It's just functional. But you know, at this point, you know, it's got, since I repaired that, more, more, because this is nylon, more, I'm sure there's another set of them over here, 
So far, none on the front. It's really more on the arms because my arms are swinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm grabbing and I'm pulling and pushing things around and trying to cut. So anyway, this is, this is, might be my last day. Four years. I've put this jacket through hell. And I've also worn this on the street because I, until I got all these rips and stuff, I just said, well, they'll just think that I just made that stain today. <laughs> and so I would wear it anyway, um, just around. So this jacket has been worn, worn, worn. Just really four years. Uh, that's incredible considering what, um, what abuse I've put it through. Now, over here, look at this. This is the same jacket as that, just a different color, okay? And this one I bought about a week after I bought that one. I have not worn this one on the trail. I had intended to use this as a trail jacket and this as a street jacket. It just never happened. So I've been occasionally like in the cooler, um, you know, late spring mornings, I switched to this instead of the LT. The, this is an Atom SL. This is an Atom SL. And this is an Atom LT. Now, this is starting to look like a puffer jacket. But you'll notice that it's, um, it is more, it's really substantial um, fleece on the side here. It's much thicker. And it's not, doesn't have any um, cross hatches in it. So, but it's really, really dense and it's stretchy and it offers a lot of ventilation because you trap in a lot of, of um, stuff with this nylon because it's almost, it's almost windproof. Now on here, it's not because when you raise your arms up and it's like, a, you know, freezing weather um, uh, and it's windy and you raise your arms up, you can just barely feel a breeze going through your jacket just at a very, very low rate. Put your hands back down, it's gone. So I think Arcteryx did a brilliant job on this particular model as well. All of them are hoodies. Um, this one here is probably about, I don't know, it's, I think, think, think brand new now. They're like around, I don't know, maybe 300 now. And then this is like maybe 200, well, I think it's a little over 200 actually. And the same thing for that. So I don't know, judge it how you like. Arcteryx is, is kind of an expensive brand um, to some people, but to, um, to, to my way of thinking, this lasted four years. It's been through hell and it's also a minimalist design. I mean, it's got absolutely nothing you don't need I mean, that's what you really want when you're out backpacking. You don't, and also I'll say this, this is really intended for backpacking. The shape of the jacket, it is tailored so that you have no extra fluff around you. So you can get your waist belt, your, um, your, your sternum strap cross it. You don't have extra fabric just flapping around in there, like a lot. In fact, most other jackets have got, they're not shaped, they're not tailored right. This has got a, this has got a curve to it. You can actually see it. All of them do. Everything that Arcteryx makes, or made back then, I don't know if they still are doing this, um, but everything that I've ever bought from them in the past, let's put it that way, has always um, been like that kind of design. So I, I think it's really worth it to get that attention to detail. Now, the last thing I wanna mention is these are really, really lightweight, the Atom SL. And I'm gonna try and do this one-handed, I probably can. So I'm gonna roll this up and into its own hood, just so that you can see. Um, <laughs> I feel kind of, um, I feel kind of like handicapped here. This must be what it's like if you get your hand chopped off and you only have one. Okay. Now, this is really poofy still. 
really, really poofy. If I wanted to scrunch it up, it fits smaller than a Nalgene bottle. I mean, it gets really, really small. Um, I use this as a pillow sometimes. It's just in this state. I just roll it up, put it in its hood, flip it upside down, and I put my head on this side. And, you know, makes a pretty decent pillow. It's less than a pound. This is over a pound, but not by much. This is a really nice jacket. I have, oh gosh, I've had, I, past tense, I have had, I don't know, maybe five or maybe six of these, the LTs. And then I had one SV, which was even thicker. It didn't have this on the side. Um, it was just a, it was completely enclosed. And SV stands for severe. LT stands for light. This is the puffer that you would t put in your backpack for, um, you know, average, um, f you know, freezing weather type stuff. If you go down even deeper, you need something more. Um, so anyway, I'm going to start wearing this, unfortunately. Either that or I'm going to have to buy another one of those. Only like next time I think I really want to have something that's not so bright because while I'm bushwhacking, sometimes I'm fence hopping and uh, that is very visible and so is that. Well, this is a, <clears throat> this is a, um, I took that video this morning where I was reviewing this. So my, my jacket is sopping wet. I just got back from a hike. And if you remember, I said, this is probably going to be my last hike with these. Well, it's um, very interesting because look here. You see something wrong with the zipper? <laughs> like it's um, maybe missing a zipper pull. How do you like that? And there's nothing to hook it on to. So at this point... It takes, and this is no problem, this is no fault of Arcteryx. This is YKK. They're long-lasting, but they don't last forever. And, you know, that's just, you can't replace that unless if you, like, take off. No, actually, I don't think you can. Not down here. You might be able to replace it up there in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could re-thread in another one up there, possibly. But I don't have one. And this jacket really, you see, you can get that on there. Oh, actually, no. That's a stop. You can't. Oh, man. So, yeah, you can't repair it. It's gone. This was the end. This was the last hike. From now on, it's going to be very cumbersome to use. I can still... Um, you know, I'm trying to do this with gravity. I can still, um, thread it in and pull it up like I did on my hike. It was like I had pulled, I had opened it up all the way and then I got into a really cold, windy section. So I zipped it up and that's when, when I reached for the zipper, that's when it broke. So, of course, I uh, leave no trace behind. So I, I took that home. Goodbye, jacket. You were you you were very good to me. And I will remember that for a very long time. This was probably you were my favorite jacket. Period. <laughs> so versatile. You can't beat this jacket. <laughs>